Hi everyone, welcome to the eCamp channel. This is Yuan. I'm from the Drexel Nanomaterials Group. I'm also a new member of the eCamp channel. In the following videos, we are going to give an interview to Professor Yuriko Gotsi. Speaking of him, as a prominent member of the electrochemistry community, Professor Gogotsi has authored numerous seminar papers, delivered keynote speeches at prestigious conferences, and collaborated with fellow researchers worldwide. His insights and innovations continue to shape the direction of the electrochemistry research, inspiring scientists and engineers to explore new frontiers in energy storage, environmental sustainability, and beyond. This video will be separated into several sections, his advices for young scientists in the field, his opinions on publications, and his perspective on nanomaterial application in the electrochemistry field. Today, he will give some suggestions for young scientists. Let's go to the video. What advice do you have for uh, young scientists starting their career in academia? Uh, well, again, uh, the key advice I always give to uh, students, postdocs uh, uh, who come uh, talk to me, who consider studying here, find what you like to do. Do things that you like to do. Because if you do what you like, you are going to dedicate time to it, you are going to do it well. If you do it well, you are going to succeed. You will have a successful career. But what is equally or even more important, you will be a lucky, happy person. Because we all spend very significant part of our life working. So if your work becomes your hobby, something you really love, you will be happy and you will be successful. And I think this is the absolutely key and main advice and people who follow it become successful and happy people. People who try to force themselves doing something that, uh, well, may give you a high salary, uh, well, my parents told me this is a good career path, uh, my friend decided to study this and that, uh, my mother got a PhD degree, so I should be at least as good as uh, uh, my mom. This rarely works. So again, follow your heart. I think it's absolutely critically important here. And I'm going to stop here. Everything else will be secondary. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, the next question is, what are the key skills or quantities that you believe young scientists should develop, succeed in the field? Well, again, define the field. If we are talking since this electrochemistry channel, I understand people uh, who uh, listen to us uh, today are primarily PhD students, uh, postdocs, who are working in a broad field of electrochemistry, from fundamental to applications. So I take it as a field of electrochemistry, academic, industrial electrochemistry mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. So what uh, skills and qualities I believe are important? I don't need to tell you that you need to know your field. If you are an electrochemist, you should know chemistry, you should know electrochemical science, uh, you should understand physics, uh, and of course nowadays uh, uh, knowing how to work with computers, eventually do some programming coding uh, using advanced software uh, to treat your data and eventually also do uh, computational uh, science and predicting um, outcome of experiments is important. However, this is what every instructor will tell you in class. What I think is necessary for everyone is work on writing and presentation skills. Actually, this is a key weakness I see among students and postdocs that I meet because it is not enough to produce excellent results. Until you publish and present your results, no one knows that you have excellent results. No one knows that you made a discovery. No one knows that you have developed a new battery. 
And this is often an obstacle. If particularly you want to go to academia, learning how to write, becoming a good writer, good presenter, is absolutely critical. If you can present your results to a broader audience, you will become a great instructor if you can present well, you can become a good professor. But you also will succeed because your work will be appreciated. People will read your papers if you write good papers. People will cite your work. People will appreciate what you have done. So, my suggestion, work on your writing and presentation skills. This is what will help you immensely in addition to your career. And then think what you want to do. If you want to go to industry and with all the gigafactories being built around, there are lots of opportunities. There are lots of opportunities, smaller companies that explore new types of energy generation, storage. You need to test the waters. Being a PhD student or a postdoc, most of you are familiar with academia, but national laboratories, companies, are not necessarily a familiar ground. So people go to industry often saying, okay, this is a place I will implement my ideas, I will build a real battery, and I will be successful. Or go to national laboratory and think, okay, look, I will do research, have fun, and no teaching needed or writing proposals. In reality, things often are different. So my suggestion, therefore, think of what you want to do. Think what kind of skills you will need for specific field. Definitely being a good presenter, being able to mentor students, being able to teach, explain is critical for a professor. If you want to go to academia, you may want to dedicate more time developing these skills. But if you want to go to industry, think how you can get project done. Work under time constraints. Understand how to write reports. So basically every job has certain requirements and I think it's important to think about it. But again, the key thing here, you need to be expert in your field. If you know your field, you will get a job. And learn how to write and present your ideas clearly. That will help you again, whether you are going for interview to get a job, or write a paper or a proposal in the future to get funding wherever you work, Industry Academia National Lab, this will be again absolutely critical in my opinion. Thank you so much. That's very broad. I have a question kind of off the uh, list where you mentioned a lot of skills and there's one uh, the reason I'm talking about is about social networking. Do you think it's a skill? Um, because f as a young scientist, I usually feel very nervous, like attending a big conference, yeah. and I feel mm -hmm. ob obliged to like talk to a big person mm -hmm. <laughs> or like how to get mm -hmm. things started. And if I even I talk to them, mm -hmm. I don't necessarily know how to keep the connection going. So. Yeah. Uh. Uh, fine, okay. Well, uh, I just uh, didn't consider it to be a really a skill uh, because, but oh, yeah, I think also sure. uh, we're coming from different generations. When I, when I was born and raised, uh, there were uh, no uh, cell phones and computers and people communicated by talking to each oh. other. Sure. Uh, nowadays, uh, people in uh, your generation and generation of uh, listeners there are the one who know how to text each other uh, and uh, may be less comfortable uh, walking into a room full of people and starting a conversation. Um, it is important. Yes. We don't live, we don't work in vacuum. I collaborate with lots of people. We have probably two dozen of formal and informal collaboration with people around the world. I go to conferences, not only listen, learn, or present my work, I go to meet colleagues, collaborators. Mm -hmm. I search for new students and postdocs, make new connections here. So I think networking, social networking also, is just a part of it here. Whenever you look for a job 
or an advice, those are people in the community. And in my opinion, it's just important to become a part of this community because it's also part of your life. If you feel comfortable in this community, and doesn't matter, community of laboratory. Mm -hmm. So for example, having good environment in the lab, in my opinion, is as important as having experts in the lab. Yes. Having connections around the world is important. And also in our group, people go to conferences a lot, starting from the first year, as soon as they have first results to present and sometimes even earlier. Because I think it's extremely valuable for younger people to develop those connections. And my suggestion is simply, only way to learn, just like writing papers and speaking. If you don't present all the time in group meetings, informally, formally, you will not learn how to present. If you don't communicate, you will not learn how to communicate. Mm -hmm. Go to conferences. Doesn't matter small or big. There may be local, there may be university conference. Go. Talk, discuss with poster presenters. Open your eyes to research in fields that are not directly your field. Learn. It will be very important for you. You will have a broader perspective. Talk to people. So it is important. I don't know how to teach, to be honest, uh, social skills. Uh, this is outside my field of expertise, I would say. And the only advice I can give you, don't be shy. People want to communicate. People like myself, professors, gladly talk to students. I talk to lots of students, dozens of students probably at each conference, mm -hmm. uh, maybe more. And people approach me, people ask questions. I go to poster sessions, I ask questions, I ask questions after the talks. We are professors, but we are just uh, researchers like yourself. We are all in the same boat. I also learn just like everyone else here. I may be studying at a high level, but I keep growing. If I stop learning, if I stop listening, if I stop learning, reading papers, I won't progress and develop. You do the same things. Yeah. Yeah. You learn yeah. from me, I learn from you. It happens in our group level, as you know. You know about things I don't know. You know more about certain things I know, maybe superficially. And I learn from you, I count on your knowledge here. So again, don't be shy. I remember I was very excited when I, for the first time, went to conference uh, in Europe. And I was able to see people whose books I read, whose paper I cited, and finally, wow, <laughs> this person here alive, I can talk, I can have lunch during the conference with this person here. I think it's just an exciting opportunity. There is no need to be shy. Don't hesitate to approach Nobel laureate when you uh, see him or her at a conference. If you recognize a speaker whose paper you cited, just come and tell, uh, look, Professor X or Y, I so much liked your article. People will love it and will be glad to discuss with you. And then you ask a question or tell, you know, it looks like I found an error in your calculations here. <laughs> this will be the beginning of a conversation. Nice. Thank you. I love the answer. Yeah. yeah. The only way to do is through doing. It's the communication. Doing so. mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. If we love yeah. science, we will enjoy communicating. Mm -hmm. Because science. people share the same value with you. It doesn't matter whether someone is uh, a PhD student in the first year of PhD study or even maybe an undergrad doing research, uh, professor at a university or established scientist and uh, laureate of uh, many awards. If they are real scientists, they care about science, so they ha have the same interest you have. Yes, yes, definitely. I hope you enjoyed the video today. In the next video, Professor Gogozzi will give his advice to postdoctoral researchers on how to be prepared to be an independent PI. We maintain this channel only on the weekends. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. The video in our ECAM channel are only for educational purposes and knowledge sharing. Please subscribe, like, and share our video to support our channel. Thank you for watching the video today. See you next time.